Hello there, this is Dr. Mintz. This is a four-year-old with a history of cough. We have two views here, an AP and lateral. And I'll let you take a quick look at those and just form your own idea of what you think might be going on. Here's the lateral, there's the AP. Okay, is there an abnormality? Yes. What anatomy is involved? We'll see about that. But I think those are the two most important questions to ask yourself, especially early on in radiology, whether you're an early training radiologist or a radiologist assistant or an x-ray technologist. You should always look at images of this sort and ask the question, is it normal or abnormal? And if it's abnormal, what anatomy is involved? Steps one and two. Step three, if you're going to go there, you don't always have to, but if you're going to go there, step three is what are the possible diagnoses? And for most people, especially if you're an early radiologist training or you're an RA, radiologist assistant, or an x-ray technologist, I think the first two are very important, and if you're going to embark upon a possible diagnosis or differential diagnosis, think in terms of the most likely and maybe one or two after that. That should be your focus. I think it's a mistake to get caught up in the many obscure differential diagnoses for all kinds of processes that we see in radiographic imaging. And the best thing is to just answer those first two questions and go from there. Is there an abnormality, yes or no? If there is, what anatomic area is involved? So, is there an abnormality here? I think on lateral view you can see, yes, there is. Looking at the lateral view, you see that you can visualize both hemidiaphragms, and hopefully you know that the right lung is more magnified on a lateral view because the left lung is closer to the image plate or radiograph. And so the right lung having been somewhat magnified, you can see that it extends back a little more posteriorly than the left. So this left hemidiaphragm and cosophrenic angle here are not as far posteriorly positioned as the right. So that means if we follow this shadow up here, this is all left hemidiaphragm and this is right. What is this air pocket here? That is the stomach bubble. And the stomach bubble, of course, in most patients is going to be beneath the left hemidiaphragm and it's right beneath this left hemidiaphragm here. If you follow the diaphragms anteriorly though, you lose both of them. You can't follow this one anteriorly and you can't follow this one anteriorly. Why? Well, because there's an abnormality. But what side is the abnormality on? Is it on the right or is it on the left? Well, let's look at the AP view. Can you tell from this? I can't. And part of the reason I can't is that the patient is rotated to the right. And you can see that because normally you see more heart shadow to the left than right. Granted, this is a child and there's some thymic tissue here that's accounting for the shadow, but still, this is a pretty small left cardiac shadow, and this is relatively prominent, even if some of it is thymic. So the patient is rotated. You can also see the rotation if you look at the posterior rib shadows, and you see those on the left look a little steeper and a little shorter, perhaps, and the right are a little bit more open. So the patient's rotated. When you have an abnormality in a lateral view and you can't corroborate it or correlate it on the frontal view, in this case an AP, you have to study the lateral view a little more closely. Okay, so here's a nice zoom that shows quite a bit of detail about the diaphragm. You should be able to follow this right hemidiaphragm all the way back to the right costophrenic angle and the left all the way to the left costophrenic angle. So you lose the right anteriorly, and you lose the left anteriorly. Do you ever lose either of those shadows normally? 
Yes, you very often are unable to visualize the left diaphragmatic shadow anteriorly because the left hemidiaphragm is usually obscured anteriorly by the cardiac base. So the heart sits over the left hemidiaphragm more so than the right, unlike what it appears on this chest radiograph because, as I say, the patient is rotated. But on the lateral view, usually you'll see that the anterior portion of the left hemidiaphragm is obscured because of the cardiac base, as I say. The right hemidiaphragm, in a good radiograph in most people, you'll be able to follow it all the way anteriorly. We cannot follow the right hemidiaphragm in this case, let me let you see the cusp for angles, all the way anteriorly. Why? Because there's an abnormality. Where's the abnormality? Well, we can't see where the abnormality uh, is on the AP view because it's just not showing up. And I think that's probably because the patient is rotated. But what usually would be in this area on a lateral view in the right lung? In other words, what usually would be right along the right border of the heart? And the answer is it's the right middle lobe. The right middle lobe usually kind of comes down like this, like a slice of pie. You have the right, the right minor fissure, and you have the inferior margin of the right middle lobe, kind of creating this somewhat triangular area that, when opacified, whether by pneumonia or atelectasis, obscures this right cardiac border. Now, we probably are not seeing that in this case because the patient is rotated, in fact, almost certainly. If you look at the lateral view, though, you can see there's a band of opacity here in about the anticipated location of the right middle lobe. And that same band of opacity extends inferiorly and anteriorly, and it actually silhouettes the right hemidiaphragm. Remember, the more superior here is the right hemidiaphragm. It silhouettes that right hemidiaphragm anteriorly. So, at first glance, it could be very confusing to look at a lateral chest radiograph like this and say, well, here's a left hemidiaphragm, right hemidiaphragm, because I know blah, 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 and the lung is more posteriorly projecting on the lateral view on the right, and this is stomach bubble. And here, all of a sudden, you find out both the right and left hemidiaphragms are silhouetted, obscured, on the lateral view. Then you think to yourself, aha! The left hemidiaphragm is normally silhouetted anteriorly in most patients, and the right is rarely so. So we have an opacity that is obscuring the right hemidiaphragm anteriorly, and even though I don't see an obscuration or silhouetting of this right cardiac border, I'm going to say this is a right middle lobe process. It could be atelectasis or pneumonia. Since I don't see much of a wedge shape here and it looks relatively flattened, I'm going to suggest this is probably right middle lobe atelectasis. So it's interesting in terms of a case that demonstrates the normal anatomy visualized on a lateral view. And it's also interesting that the finding is obscured here on the AP view. In fact, if you look over here on the left, you might get thrown off by the little bit of haziness you see here. And sometimes if there is a mild lingular opacification, you can get a haziness in the left cardiac border like this, very much it has a similar appearance to this. And the other surprising thing is this border is sharp, sharp, sharp. I mean, that's as sharp as it gets. And to tell someone that this is a right middle lobe process would at first seem surprising. But when you put together all of the details, you see you have the right hemidiaphragm, the left hemidiaphragm, and this area of opacity here. And that opacity obscures this right hemidiaphragm anteriorly 
whereas the left hemidiaphragm is normally obscured anteriorly. So even though you see this little bit of haziness here, you realize that it's probably going to be the right middle lobe that's involved. So I can say that the right cardiac border is sharp here and not obscured or not silhouetted. Why? Because of patient rotation. So the area of the heart that normally would be right here in the most right lateral aspect has actually gone back a little bit because the patient is turned in that manner, turned to the right. So that silhouetted border of the heart is actually tucked back here a little bit. And so we don't see it on FOSS. In the case of the lingula here, where it looks like it might be a lingular process, we need to find some reason why it looks like that, aside from there being an actual process in the lingula of the left upper lobe. And my proposal there is that because of the rotation of the patient to the right, it moves the heart over this way, but it moves some of the hilar vessels more to the left. So you can see follow these hilar vessels farther and more clearly than you usually can. And so the vessels that are usually in the retrocardiac area here on the left are now projecting a little bit more laterally. And between those vessels projecting over the left cardiac border here and the confluence of ribs, I think we're getting partial obscuration of that left cardiac border.